When the pH is 7, then it's a case where the sample is neither acids nor base. But less than 7, it's an acid, we say. More than 7, it's a base all the way. I quickly want to go over two really important concepts again. There was something called complete ionization. So complete ionization. And that often happened with strong acids. And then there was something called incomplete ionization. And that was often something to do with weak acids. So weak acids had incomplete ionization. Now I'm going to quickly go over some of the terminology you might see. So often when it comes to complete ionization, you have the complete the error that indicates completion. So here there's no reverse reaction, there's only one way, which means all of it will go this way. And here this means that we have A is our acid, and it has its proton in the case of a hydrogen attached, this is a proton. So this is before it actually donates the proton. Then it comes in contact with water. And now the acid is its, in its ion form. It's donated the proton. And the hydrogen has attached to the hydronium ion. And the proton was donated. So this, was, this is often the terminology you can see for simple, just general idea of, of completion. You see that H, um, HA. That just means that you have the acid plus your hydrogen. And then the, if the A minus by itself, that means the actual structure, whatever that was, is now a negative chloride ion. Incomplete combustion, you can see the same thing, except for the only difference is now here you have the equilibrium arrow. And what that means is at some point, it's going to be at some stage where not all of it is going to have gone this way, but there'll be at some stage where it's a steady state, equilibrium. And obviously these arrows back and forth suggest that equilibrium. So you write the same way as complete, just with that arrow. And these are your weaker acids, such as citric acid or acetic acids are your incomplete ionization examples. And so I'm going to quickly go over the dot point. It says describe the difference between a strong and a weak acid in terms of the equilibrium between intact molecule and its ions. That's what we have to talk about. It's the equilibrium between the intact molecule and its ions and how that relates to a weak acid or a strong acid. We just mentioned that, for example, for a strong acid, there is no equilibrium. All of the actual molecules will not be intact at the end. They'll all be ions. Whereas for weak acids, there'll be some which are going to be still intact, so these original molecules, and some which will be the actual ions. And I'll go over that in more detail now. So let's just say, for example, we have hydrochloric acid. This was hydrochloric acid was the example of a strong acid. And we put that into our water, our H2O. So let's do that. Let's put our these three, four molecules of hydrochloric acid into our water. What will happen? Well they will all dissociate. So they will these are the intact molecules. So intact molecules. They're covalently bonded. And now here are our ions. And because this goes to completion, what that means is all of them will be separated from their molecules. Now they're all separated. So this is completion, and this is the strongest type of acid. Because what that means is there's going to be lots of hydrogen inside the actual solution. And how many more of these hydrogen ions, these protons, this is what causes it to be acidic. Now this is more straightforward, it's just the idea of a strong acid, but now let's take acidic acid, and acidic acid is an example of a weak acid, so acetic acid is the example of weak acid. In the same idea, we have these four molecules, we'll take them, so this is, these are these four molecules here, is the same as this, this one here. And obviously H2O, so this here, is the water itself. So let's grab them and just put them in. What will happen is you're going to have, because it's a weak acid, you might only have one of these dissociating. So as opposed to completion, you might only have one of them being removed. And you have three which are still intact, so maybe three which are intact and one which has dissociated its ions. But because it's equilibrium, what that means is, for example, at some stage you could have maybe this one breaking apart. This one breaking apart. But at the same time as this one breaks apart, the other one will recombine again. So equilibrium means you have a constant level, but it means that things will move constantly from one to the other, but overall the ratio will stay the same. So in this case, it means one might dissociate, but as soon as one dissociates, the other one reconnects. And also because there's equilibrium, there are things like temperature. If you remember your Chatier's principle, 
temperature, you might have concentration and pressure. All of these could affect the actual equilibrium. So we said if we had, if we increased the volume, so if we had a bigger pot of water, just increased, I just doubled the volume of water. Oops, what the? Um, I doubled the volume of water. Good, good, yeah. Uh, so if I double the volume of water, what that would have meant is that we have more water here. So we have more concentration for the actual reactants. And remember equilibriums and Chatea's principle, if we have this that disturbed the equilibrium, that means we're going to have more, the equilibrium will shift to the right to counteract that change, which means we're going to have more products being formed. So if we add more water, what will be the end result is that you might have even one more of these dissociating because the products are your ions. That just means for weak acids, you could actually have something like pressure and temperature and concentration, them affecting the equilibrium. As for strong acids, because it all goes to completion, even if you add more water to it, like if you double the water, it doesn't really matter because it goes to completion anyway. But yeah, that's the most important part from this dot point. So describe the difference between a strong and a weak acid in terms of the equilibrium between the intact molecule and its ions. For a strong acid, at the end there will be no more of the intact molecule left. It will all have dissociated into its ions, as we saw here. Whereas for the weak one, we're going to have not all of them having, so there'll be still some intact molecules, as we had here. And there are gonna, it's going to be a few which have dissociated. And we mentioned because it's an actual equilibrium, first of all, that means it can happen that one dissociates. And as soon as one dissociates, a new one will have recombined again. Overall, the actual concentrations remains the same. So you're going to have maybe some swapping around, but overall it stays the same. Unless we change something like the temperature or the concentrations of one of the actual reactants or products or the pressure, because these things can change the equilibrium. And so that's important for the weak acids, where strong acids are always go to completion, so it wouldn't really matter. I hope that's useful. Thank you for watching.